prepare any any, any questions. questions that's, a good idea. that's a good idea. Yeah. And similarly, I shall ask people if they've got um, thoughts about questions for the chief constable. Okay. Um, yeah, that's also a good. Idea. We could let them on. Let, yeah. them, let them have them, and yeah. at least he can come prepared. And yeah, that would be useful. We won't get feeling anybody's collar. Yeah. <laughs> <Hopefully>. <laughs> oh, there's Claire. Hello, Claire. Hello, hello. Long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Granville, I will say this at the meeting, but I would be happy to join the um, COVID task and finish group. Judith Tolbert, I'm delighted. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, Nigel, you're now in twice. I'm in twice. Oh, here's Nigel. <laughs> well, well, there we are, you see. You can actually see me, can you? Yeah. You look <laughs> as if you're in the middle of fog, Nigel. It looks as if it's a foggy <laughs> night with your headlights behind you. I know, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, um, I, I have, hmm. yeah. No, it's there's something seriously wrong with my video. Yeah, with the built in camera. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good Hello, evening. Judith. Mm -hmm. Hello, Brian. Hello, Brian. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> <laughs> this is outrageous. <laughs> oh, you, I think you might find it quite interesting. <sighs> no. Since, 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 since you've gone, you see, we've gone to we've gone to <laughs> mini agendas. <laughs> Count it as one in the bag in the bank yeah. for next time or yeah, January. Absolutely. Yeah, January is looking at You won't be complaining, Brian, when January when you're looking at January's on the other side. I thought we had a 500 page minimum, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> the council, uh, council um, can't afford the postage any longer. No, that's right. <laughs> you for a couple of months and look what you get up to. <laughs> Mine came with the grateful thanks of the postman, who's no longer got backache. <laughs> yeah, we're all saving the NHS money, you see. It's, it's good. So what did you think of last night's um, East West Rail um, get together, Granville? Well, at least, they're, at least they're having an open discussion. That's all you can say. Um, I don't know where this is going to go, Brian. Well, lit literally, and, and you'll excuse me having a little joke at oh, your yeah. Not mine. <laughs> Absolutely. Expense, <Yes. laughs> but literally, where where they will go if they go if they go a northern route, how that how they then expect to get down um, down to um, Cambridge South? I've, I've got no idea. Yeah. Yeah. There is a route apparently. There's a there, there is there is a draft route. They have a draft route. They're just not telling anyone yet. <laughs> Especially anybody that uh, might live in the area. Absolutely. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, I think. I mean, that whole northern route seems to be predicated on uh, little houses. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. And, and that. Um, you know the, the stuff that Stephen Kelly was talking about. I think did he talk about going from what a, a seven thousand home um, cent town uh, that we've got now mm. to to I think another twenty five thousand. Yeah, it's Camborne north of the Cape. Yeah, and of course that whole East West Rail is, is, is as we say predicated on new housing. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Mm. It's going to be massive. Mm -hmm. 
I can't imagine a queue getting into Camborne, can you? <laughs> there will be. <laughs> right. What what have I can you hear me? Yes. What I've thought about East West Rail, the assumption is that the new housing and the railway station will be close together. But that's not necessarily the case. What you could find is that the housing goes somewhere, uh, probably maybe on public land, in order to pay for the railway line in a totally different location. <laughs> um, yeah. That was that was mentioned to me, and it's an intriguing possibility. <laughs> yeah, well, thankfully, I don't think there's any public land around there. It's all privately owned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And therefore, there is a lot of interest in making sure where it goes. Yep, yep. So a lot of money up to be made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> evening, evening, Peter. Evening, Richard. Sorry, I'm muted. Hello. Hello, Richard. Hiya. Good evening, Bridget. Nice to Bridget. see you. Good evening. Yes. Good. Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my pleasure. It's been a long day. <laughs> Bridget, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't manage to get to join you yesterday, uh, but I had a hospital appointment that went on much longer than I expected. So by the time I got back. <laughs> um, Far more important, Nigel. If there's anything you want to talk about, just give me a ring. Yeah, fine. OK. Right. Well, according to my time, it is now 17.20. Yeah. <clears throat> Are we quarter at the moment, Victoria? One, two, three. Yes. We are, yeah, yeah. Okay. Would you like me to take you live? Um, I think just give it two more minutes, Liam, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, just see if we get a couple more members join us. Um, but if not, then we'll go. No problem. Uh, Martin's, just Martin's joining, yeah. So we have a member of parliament. Who's that? <laughs> oh, Peter Maddock. Right, Liam, if you would be so kind, let us yep. go live, please. Sure, it'll take me a moment and I'll let you know once it's live. Thank you.
OK, Chair, I believe that we are now live. Thank you very much, Liam. No problem. Uh, good afternoon, members, leader, cabinet members, and any members of the public who may be joining us this evening for this meeting of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee of South Cambridgeshire District Council. My name is Grenville Chamberlain and I am the chair of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. I'd like to start, if I may, with a few housekeeping points. Now, could I ask members please to make sure that your device is fully charged or is charging? And please switch off your microphones unless I ask you to speak. Uh, and when you finish speaking, will you please turn off your microphone immediately so that we uh, make sure the sound is best for others. Please speak slowly and clearly and do not talk over or interrupt anyone. And if you wish to speak on an item, please indicate this using the chat function, which the vice chair Judith will be managing for me. Uh, I'm pleased to say that present online with me are the following members of the scrutiny and overview committee who I will now invite to introduce themselves. Members, after I call your name, would you please turn on your microphone and introduce yourself so that we may formally note your presence. And please remember to turn your microphone off after your introduction. Uh, can we start with Councillor Anna Bradnam? Chair, I believe Councillor Bradnam is still to join us. OK. Uh, Councillor Martin Khan. Uh, hello, uh, Martin Khan. Uh, Thank you, Martin. Councillor Nigel Cathcart. Yes, uh, I'm the uh, member for uh, Bassingbourne, been on the council for many years. Thank, uh, you, very, thank you, you're very welcome. Councillor Sarah Chung Johnson. Hello, Sarah Chung Johnson, councillor for Longstaff Ward. Thank you, Sarah. Councillor Graham Cohn. Chair, Graham Councillor Cohn is still to join us. OK. Councillor Claire Daunton. Um, yes, hello, um, I'm Claire Daunton and I'm one of the members for the Fenditton and Fullbourne Ward. Thank you, Claire. Councillor Douglas De Lacey. Chair, Councillor De Lacey is also still to join us. Okay. Councillor Peter Fane. Peter Fane, member for Shelford Ward. Thank you, Peter. Councillor Joe Hales. Good evening, Chair. Uh, yeah, Joe Hales, member from Melbourne. Thank you. Nice to see you, Joe. Councillor Jeff Harvey. Chair, Councillor Harvey, I believe, is also still to join us. OK. Councillor Steve Hunt. Hello, Steve Hunt here, Councillor for um, Hayston and Pinkton and Orchard Park. The Vice Chair of the meeting, Councillor Judith Ripith. Good evening. Um, Councillor Judith Ripith, as you've just been told, um, Milton and Water Beach Ward. Thank you, Judith. Councillor Richard Williams. Thank you, Chair. I'm Richard Williams. I'm the member for the Whittlesford Ward. Thank you very much and welcome all of you. Uh, we're also joined this evening by the Leader of the Council, Councillor Bridget Smith, and Cabinet Member Brian Mills. And I believe that that is all of the councillors here with us this evening. But I'd also like to welcome uh, Rebecca Dobson, who is the new Head of Democratic Services. A formal welcome to your very first scrutiny and overview committee, and we look forward to working with you. Could I ask that if any member has to leave during the meeting, could they please make this known so that we can uh, formally record that? So we move to item one on the agenda, which is apologies for absence. Victoria, do we have any apologies for absence? Um, I've received no apologies. However, um, Councillor Cohn, De Lacey and Harvey have not yet joined us, but I've not received apologies from them. OK. Chairman, can I apologise for being a bit late, but uh, glad to be here now. It's Councillor Andrew Bradnam. You're very welcome and lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Item two on the agenda is declarations of interest. So can I ask members, does any member have any interest they wish to declare? 
No, thank you. If not, if you do decide at any point in time that you wish to, please uh, speak up. Item three on the agenda is the minutes of the meeting held on Wednesday, the 7th of October. Can we just go very briefly through them for accuracy on page one? Page two. Page three. Very short minutes for us. If everyone is happy, I will sign them at some point as a true record of that meeting. Agree. Thank you very much. Item four is public questions, and I can, I think, confirm that there are no public questions. So we move on to perhaps what is the main item on the agenda this evening, which is our work programme going forward. And you will recall that we have spoken about the triangulation meetings that we have held with the leader and members of cabinet. And we are therefore making sure that the first uh, of our task and finish groups reports quite soon. And I'm hoping that Sarah Chung Johnson can give us an indication of when her equality task and finish group is likely to come back with a report to us so that we can plan that into their work program going forward. Sarah, do you have an indication or a feeling for the time frame that you will require for your task and finish group, please? Um, I think we will. I don't have a time frame. It's a short oh, answer. Yeah, so I think, but we are uh, making progress. We had a really productive meeting uh, with Susan Gardner Craig uh, to talk through some of the um, employment aspects of the, the motion. Um, but um, we haven't actually convened just as a as a task and finish group, um, just ourselves following that yet. So we've got that meeting in the diary and we will look at the naming and also a, a definitive date for when we look to finish this piece of work. Do you think February of next year would be appropriate time? I think that would be realistic. Yeah, that would be, that would be okay. the approximate time frame that I think we had in mind. Yeah. Let, let, let's let's plan on, on your report <coughs> meeting in February because then okay. that would probably work uh, rather well because what I would like to do this evening is to instigate a task and finish group uh, although the recommendation was that we should only work with one task and finish group at any point in time, I do believe that we can handle a second one, which would look at the um, COVID-19 impact on community facilities. Uh, and I believe that we could start that now and hopefully move that fairly quickly uh, with a report coming to our January meeting. That would be my objective. Um, so far, uh, Judith has agreed to join, as has Joe Hales and Claire Daunton too. I'm happy to lead it. Um, and if one other councillor was willing to join, I think four or five would be ideal. Uh, five would help us just in case one member was unable to make a particular meeting. So if, if there is another volunteer, I would be delighted to hear from you. Chairman. I'm um, sorry, um, uh, Councillor Bradnam's put her hands up. Can you use the chat function though, please? Thank sorry, I, I missed that. Yeah, Councillor Bradnam. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I maybe it was said at the very beginning. Um, I just wanted to say uh, that if it, I be happy to be part of it, but I'm also from Milton and Water Beach. So although I sit on the Milton and indeed uh, assist the Land Beach COVID groups, um, you might want to view from a different part of the district. Uh, since Judith is also a representative of Milton and Water Beach, you might want a, a view from somewhere else. Well, it's very kind of you to offer. And if there are no offers, I will happily take your volunteering <laughs> contribution. Thank you. OK. Does, is, does anyone else like to take part? If not, um, Councillor Bradman will be very welcome. OK, 
Councillor Bradman, thank you very much. It looks as though uh, you've you've got the role, and um, I will liaise with um, Democratic Services and the Community Support Group at the Council with a view to getting our first meeting held perhaps within the next week or two. Um, and I'd very much like to understand, and I do believe that some work has already been started on this, to understand what community facilities are fully open, which are either partly or fully closed, closed. and can we find ways, um, particularly leaning on uh, the experience of Joe Hales and the wonderful uh, performance of the uh, Melbourne Hub. Can we use the experience of, of uh, to the benefit of, of other parishes within the district? Well, I think um, letters have already gone out to the parishes uh, to uh, identify exactly what facilities they have, which are open and which are not. So I'm hopeful that we can get that underway very quickly and then my next plan would be that immediately after the conclusion of that, we would set up another uh, task and finish group to look at um, the impact of social capital on our communities, uh, with a particular focus, I think, on, on doctor surgeries, because that seems to be um, a, an area of concern for, for many of us. Um, so, Bear that in mind as the next stage of the task and finish groups coming forward. But if we could just spend a moment now to talk about the um, December uh, scrutiny and overview committee meeting. Um, we have the empty home strategy. We also have an acceptance from the Chief Constable of Cambridgeshire, uh, Nick Dean who will be joining us. And I think it would be very helpful if anyone has got any particular questions that they'd like to ask. If you drop them to Victoria, we can give the Chief Constable um, an indication of the thrust of the questions that he may face. Um, this is certainly driven by his announcement that he's going to cut the number of PCSOs by 50%. Um, I have to say that in the main, the police presence that we see in Hardwick is generally uh, by, by our local PCSOs, and if they're cut in half, we won't see them very often. And I think that's uh, something that many of us will be concerned about. But we also have coming to that meeting a detailed update uh, on planning. I just, Judith and I have met with Stephen Kelly and Sharon Brown this afternoon. And once again, I can give you a heads up on the topics that we will be, uh, that they will be presenting to us at the meeting on the 17th of December. Um, and the scope of the report of their presentation will cover the following items. The key service outcomes and the progress over the over the past six months, including details of the backlog of planning applications that we presently have. Staffing and resource um, situation as it is, in terms of both permanent staff and the vacancies that exist. The budget risks and other challenges that the service faces, including both ICT and COVID. Uh, the usefulness of the terror quest contract review. A planning advisory service review of the planning committee findings, conclusions and recommendations. One of which is that a, set, a member task group is set up to oversee the implementation of those recommendations. A review of the implementation of the three development management geographical areas and their recommendations for adjustments to areas. I gather that at present, area one has less work than areas two and three. Their plan for service improvements going forwards, and finally, uh, legal processes. 
So those will be the uh, the headline topics of the areas uh, for discussion next month. So there's, there's a huge amount uh, coming there. Uh, and should there be a, a property investment decision to be made, then we may be faced with that as well. So whilst looking at page five of the work program, uh, December looks a bit thin. There's actually going to be quite a lot on the agenda. But my expectation is that we'll probably um, have the chief constable for an hour ish. And then we'll probably spend an hour or more uh, talking about planning. So although the agenda is short, it could be quite a lengthy meeting. January, um, as you will see from the um, from the list of items there is once again a very busy meeting and you, we can now add to that a report from the COVID-19 impact task and finish group and February whilst it looks thin at the moment it's likely to include the report from the equality task and finish group so once again that looks like being quite a busy meeting and inevitably uh, there may well be items from January which slip back into February um, and similarly other items might come forward. <coughs> but I'm happy to take any questions on any point if if anyone has any questions. Um, none in, in the chat so far, Chair. Okay. Well, this could be something of a record. Um, if, if there are no comments on the work programme, uh, item six is to note the dates of the future meeting. And as I mentioned, that will be held on Thursday, the 17th of December at 5.20 p.m. And the next item is of a confidential nature under item seven. And at this point, I propose that the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following item. No, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, That's all right. Johnson. Yeah, it's just beeped up. Sarah, cancel. <laughs> so, so sorry. So, okay. so sorry. I'm on my phone and I couldn't find where the chat was because I'm not used to using it on my phone. I just wanted to ask, we, just, we briefly chatted about this, um, the ICT scrutiny piece. Yes. Um, and whether or not we wanted to kind of restart that subgroup that we had given um, another recent spate of incidents. I think we should. Um, and, and, and we now have a familiar person on the cabinet who is looking at ICT, who we can question at length on all of the ways that he's holding them to account, Councillor Milnes. Yes, indeed. And, and, and very sharp he is, I can promise you, on ICT matters, as we all know. Um, so we will, uh, I'll liaise with Victoria, and we'll set up a task and finish group in the uh, another meeting of the task and finish group in the next few days. And um, Councillor Daunton would like to speak. Yeah, you sorry, Grenville. I, oh, Brid it's Councillor Daunton, please go ahead. Um, I, I think um, I, I was probably half asleep when you when you quickly passed on to the next item. I just wanted to say on, on the work programme under January, we've got a lot of um, financial material there and we, we touched on this yesterday in uh, the free meeting. Um, I, I, I just want to make it clear that I thought that um, scrutiny was looking at the strategy, the strategic issues to do with um, finance strategy and policy issues and not the the sort of detail. Well, I'm, I'm very hopeful that the reports that come with the uh, with the presentations will be at a fairly high level and therefore enable us to focus on that, um, but not um, cutting out any of the detail that members would wish to uh, to explore further. So yeah. um, high level, but nevertheless, if there are particular items that you wish to dig down into, then we'll have that opportunity as well. 
Okay. Um, Chair, the leader would like to speak. Leader, please do come in. You're very welcome. Thank you. Sorry, I was trying to put something in the chat and the whole thing just kept crashing. So I don't know what's going on here. Um, just on the ICT, um, I mean, you know, I'm very, very grateful for the work that um, Scrutiny and Overview have done on ICT in the in the past um, because it's it's actually you know formed the basis for uh, you know where we are at the moment. And I know there's been some uh, some very irritating glitches recently, but we are in a completely different place now thanks to the work of Anne Ainsworth. So I wonder if I could if I could make a suggestion that might save you doing unnecessary work and perhaps invite Anne to come along and make a verbal um, verbal report to you on exactly where ICT is um, and the work that she's she's been doing specifically with the shared services because I think that might give you the reassurance that you need without commissioning a whole piece of work um, and after that obviously you could then you know you then yeah. might choose to go and you know, do a full TNF group after that, but I would just suggest that might possibly be a starting point. That's very helpful. Thank you very much. We'll we'll invite Anne to come to our, our December meeting, bring us up to speed, and then we'll consider if we need to have a task and finish group meeting in January. We'll do that, and I hope that I hope that satisfies you, Councillor John Johnson. Yep, it does. Thank you. That's a good suggestion. Thank you very much, Leader. Um, if there are no other questions, are you happy that I move to item eight? And therefore I propose that the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of agenda seven, agenda item seven, sorry, in accordance with section 100 A, subsection four of the Local Government Act 1972, on the grounds that if present, there could be a disclosure to them of exempt information as defined in paragraph three of part one of schedule 12A of the Act. Does the committee agree that the public interest is outweighed by the recommendation to exclude the press and public for this agenda item? Does Agreed. Anyone Agreed. Agree? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, can I therefore ask that the live stream of the meeting is ended please hi there uh yeah i'm just going to be a minute doing it and i'll let you know once we are no longer live chair thank you thank you Liam.